Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be giving a general overview of LED panels. We'll discuss quite what they are, what connections you need to them, and what things are like the P numbers that you see referred to, and also scan rates. And then we'll finish up by looking at some of the different types that are out there, different sizes, uh, different P numbers, um, and indoor versus outdoor. So what is an LED panel? Well, very simply, it's a, it's a piece of plastic covered in a matrix of LEDs. Now, in this case, this one is called a P10 panel, and it's made up of 512 pixels uh, or LEDs in a grid that is 32 pixels wide by 16 pixels high for your 512. Now, this one is a P10 because the pixels are spaced 10 millimeters apart. So, going across the 10 millimeter centers and going down, they are equally 10 millimeter centers. And that's where the P number comes from. It's the pitch in millimeters between or the distance between each of the pixels. Now, this one is, as I said, a P10. Um, and on the back, they're all pretty much the same. So connectivity wise, you have just three uh, things to set up. You have your data in. Now on the most of the panels that we're using, uh, this is on a, what's called a Hub 75 connection, um, as it says uh, on here, it's a Hub 75. And that is a two-way, uh, eight pin two-way for 16 pins in total, uh, data connection. So it needs to come from a specialized uh, card um, or receiver device that's sending the data out to these panels. You can't just connect them up to your standard uh, three wire or four wire pixel string. So you have a 16 way cable coming in and much like pixels, you have a 16 wire data going out um, to your next panel. So you can daisy chain panels in much the same way you do with pixels. Now these cables, uh, you will typically get a short cable uh, like this one, a 20 centimeter one uh, supplied with each panel. And these are generally designed to connect between panels to jump from one to the next. So you simply plug it in and then you get your next panel and plug that in like that and off you go. You can daisy chain uh, your panels. Now, data coming from your controller, you can run a longer cable for that, obviously, um, such as this one here. I think this one was an 80 centimeter cable and that's designed to jump from your controller wherever you haven't put it onto the first panel in your chain. Now, the only other connection that's needed on the panels is power. And typically you get one power cable such as this with every two panels that you purchase. Uh, these are Y cables. So you five volts going in, um, pretty much all of the panels in our hobby are five volts. So five volts in, and it comes to a Y cable like this, which will then plug into two panels uh, they're always a bit tight, but they will stretch across two panels to, to then power those. Now, I, I normally find that if you've got two runs of panels, one below the other, it's easier to power the panels uh, that way, and you'll put less stress on the cables than trying to stretch them across, but they will go. We talked about, started talking about pitch. The first panel I picked up was a P10, and these used to be uh, the mainstay of the hobby. Uh, pretty much everybody went for a P10. But as pixel density has increased in the hobby, uh, things like HD props are out there now, um, 
which can have like a thousand pixels in them. I mean, my first mega tree five, six years ago wasn't even a, wasn't even a thousand pixels, so let alone a, an HD prop. But like them, things have moved on. And now typically we'll see a P5 coming in as the standard uh, density for a lot of today's panels. Now P5, as it says on the tin, is uh, five millimeters between centers. So this one is 64 pixels across by 32 down. And it's in exactly the same footprint, uh, 320 by 160 millimeters, as the P10. Now that size is typically um, the standard that we use in this hobby. It's 320 by 160, or roughly a foot by six inches. So the two common panels that we've looked at so far, um, both the same physical size, the 320 by 160. The first one was the P10, um, which used to be the mainstay. Then we moved on to P5s, which was twice the resolution. So this one is 64 by 32 for a total of 2,048 pixels. But things continue moving. So we now have things like P4s entering the hobby. Uh, that one is 80 pixels by 40 for a slightly higher resolution. But if P4 isn't good enough, we might move on to something like a P3, uh, 104 pixels by 52. You could move down to a, a P2.5, uh, 128 pixels by 64. And we're still in the same footprint, exactly the same size. Or even a P2, um, 160 pixels by 80 pixels. So it depends entirely on exactly what you're trying to do with it, what size of pixel density you need. Now, something like a P2, I probably wouldn't recommend with X lights because that's a heck of a lot of pixels for it to sit and think about rendering. We do have P2.5s though in my store, and these can be good for things like tune to signs where the audience is gonna be up nice and close uh, to the sign and you want a good resolution. I wouldn't go too big with it though. And you also have to be aware that only certain uh, controllers can actually run these panels. So the P2.5s I have here uh, will only run on a color light or a Linson card. So we've looked at density there um, from some of the, the really dense uh, new panels uh, back out to the, to the older style of P10s, which a lot of people like because um, they like the slightly pixelated look. So they don't want to go for a, um, a brand new like storefront sort of look. They want an older school pixeled look um, to make it look more homemade often. So that's the difference, some of the different P numbers, the uh, sizes that are available. Other things to look out for is uh, all of the pixels that we've, all of the panels we've looked at so far are uh, RGB. So they've all got RGB pixels in them, uh, just like a, a regular bullet pixel. Um, so that you can make them any color you like. But be aware if buying things from places like eBay that there are other types of panels available. This one is a P10, but it's completely made of red LEDs. Connections on the back are just the same. It's got the hub 75 in and out. It's got a slightly different power connector, but it's still a P10. Um, again, check your cards because if you want to run something like this, you may have to use a specific card. Now, all of the panels that we've looked at so far have been the same physical size. They've been 320 by 160. But you need to also be aware that there are different sizes out there. For instance, when I was first getting into panels, I purchased what I thought was a P10, but it wasn't. 
This has exactly the same number of pixels of the same style as our P10 here. It's still 32 pixels across by 16 high for the total of 510, but this one is in a P6 format. So it's 60% the size of our P10. Now it can be driven just the same. The connections on the back are identical. We've got the Hub 75 in, Hub 75 out, and we have the five volt connector for the power. But it's a P6. So just be aware, different sizes are out there. Uh, likewise, this one is uh, a P4. It is. Uh, it has all the same uh, resolution, or sorry, not resolution, the same number of pixels as your standard P5 panel, but it's in a footprint some 20% smaller. So might be good, you can use it, treat it just like the standard P5s in FPP, but it's a little bit of a smaller resolution, a bit of a, a higher resolution uh, with the smaller footprint. And so far, all of the panels we've been looking at are rectangular, but you can of course also get square panels. This one is a P3, I believe, uh, yeah, P3, uh, 64 pixels by 64. So you don't always have to go for rectangular. Once again, looking at the back, just the regular Hub 75 connections. So we've got the data in, the data out, and the power in the standard format. So that's some of our sizes looked at. Something else to look for when choosing a panel is the scan rate. Now that is the rate at which each line of pixels on the board is refreshed. With our outdoor P5 here, this is a 1 8 scan board. So that means that uh, there were we got 32 rows high, 1 8 of 32 is 4. So there will be four lines of data lighting up on this panel at any one time. As soon as they, those lines are refreshed, it will drop down a line, refresh those, drop down again, refresh those, until it's got down, in our case, 1 8 of uh, 32 gave us 4, it's split into 4, uh, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so it's going to run down 8 lines, refreshing each as it goes, and then it will go back to the top and start again. Now the lower the scan rate, the more time it's going to be refreshing each line on um, the panel, and therefore the brighter the panel is going to be, because as soon as each line is refreshed, it's going to start decaying, the, the brightness is going to start dropping away whilst it does the other ones, and then it comes back. Now on a typical uh, P5 indoor panel, they would come in at 1 16th scan. So it's going to have to refresh, uh, it's going to refresh two lines at a time on a 1 16th versus the four lines on a 1 8th. So for the indoor panel, it's got to drop down 16 rows before it comes back to the top and starts again. Unlike the outdoor here, the 1 8th, where it's going to do four lots. So it's got to drop down a quarter and then come back. Now SparkFun have done a handy um, write-up on this for more information. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But they've also in that included some handy animations. So if I'm not making complete sense to you, We'll just run through it now. So we have here uh, the 1 8th scan, so we can see there are four lines running down, and then we have the 1 16th scan where you can see there are only two lines running down. So the 1 16th scan isn't going to be as bright uh, because there's not so many LEDs being lit simultaneously, and it takes longer to get back to them to re refresh them. Now the other thing to watch out for on outdoor panels is, is the name. I mean, why? what makes an outdoor panel different to an indoor panel? Well, on an outdoor panel, the sides and the front are waterproof. The back, of course, still needs to be accessible, 
but your outdoor panels would typically come with a, a rubber gasket uh, or membrane like this, which is designed to sit on the back of the panel. Here we go, like so. And it's then designed to bolt um, against a solid fixed surface with the membrane pushing against it to make it waterproof. Now, these are typically used um, in the bigger uh, commercial builds, and they would be used in some of the cabinets that you can buy um, online, some of the pre-built ones, which would look something like this. So this is a, a pre-built P4. It's eight of the panels of the same size that we're used to, so two across by uh, four down. And these are outdoor panels fitted against um, a pre-built chassis. So if I spin it around, there we go. So we can see that this is a pre-built chassis. It's all watertight and contains everything that you need to drive the panels. If I open it up, you can see inside uh, the back of the panels. And you can also see that it's pre-fitted with a little power supply and a controller card as well. Power to it is coming in via these uh, water-resistant PowerCon sockets. And the data is coming in through the EtherCon uh, RJ45s at the bottom. So this is, this is what's available in the marketplace. Um, if you just want to simply go ahead and get a waterproof setup all ready to go, then you want something like this. Now the outdoor panels, as well as being a, a lower output in terms of light, are not protected from the elements whatsoever. So if you get these wet either on the front uh, or on the back, uh, they're likely to go pop um, or fizz and I think you'll probably find your warranty doesn't cover that. So these would, if you're putting them outside, you need to put them in some sort of enclosure. Now you can either fabricate something yourself, uh, maybe some, some wood with a piece of uh, perspex or polycarb on the front. Um, some people use the aluminium out enclosures like the one behind me here. Um, they're not rated for outdoor use either, um, but if you get enough mastic and sealant on them, um, then they might work, um, although your warranty wouldn't cover that. So that's your indoor versus your outdoor. Um, we've gone through the overall size, the majority of these being one foot by about six inches or 320 mil by 160. We spoke about scan rate. We looked at the P number, which is the pitch, uh, the distance between pixels. And we looked at overall what is a panel. Next week, we'll take this further and we'll start looking at controllers. These range from the very small, like the, the little Adafruit uh, single output hat here that's designed for a Pi Zero, right the way through things like the Octus Roller, an eight output panel driver for the BBB. And then up to things like the Big Daddy, like this Colorlight 5A75E uh, 16 output controller. So that's been it for this week's uh, short introduction to panels themselves. Look forward to seeing you next week where we continue uh, and start teaching you about how to drive the things. Have fun, take care. And I'll see you on the next one.